A bit of drama upended the typically reserved state committee meetings this week when Democrats walked out during questioning of Florida Surgeon General. They sure did. State Senator Lauren Book of Plantation is the Senate Democratic leader, and she led that walkout late this week. I spoke with her about it and about an extortion plot against her involving nude photos of her. You asked Dr. Lapido a number of very straight questions. Did you get any straight answers? We didn't get any straight answers from the uh, Surgeon General. It was very frustrating, very upsetting. My colleagues and I came prepared to ask questions, not just about the COVID-19 pandemic, but about other health issues that happened and have happened across our state, whether it was the hepatitis C outbreak, issues relating to AIDS and HIV, um, disparate um, healthcare in our state. And we really didn't get any answers, uh, whether it was about a, a an employee of the DOH who was just suspended because of raising concerns of vaccination rates to a very pointed question about vaccines and masks. Uh, we didn't get any answers. We got a lot of pleasantries and niceties, but uh, that was about it. Yeah. Well, and one of the most pointed questions and most important questions was, um, do vaccines work against COVID? Yes or no? Did you ever get a yes or no answer? We got a lot of, as I said yesterday, a lot of words, um, but uh, we, you know, he meandered through it and said that there was some modest benefit. But the reality is we know, and he said he likes to be guided in science, um, that vaccines work in making sure that the, that the effects of COVID-19 um, are going to be as cataclysmic and may not result in hospital stays. I also asked very pointedly, does masking work to prevent the spread of COVID-19? Again, a yes or no question. We didn't get that yes or no answer from uh, the Surgeon General. Um, as we continue to press, I asked another very pointed question about some of the um, choices that he has made as it related to a colleague of ours who was suffering from breast cancer. Senator when Tina he, Polsky. Yeah. Tina, yes. Uh, when Senator Polsky was undergoing her um, treatment for cancer, she had a meeting with um, Dr. Ladapo and she asked him to wear a mask because he refuses to say whether or not he's vaccinated, which is, of course, I guess his right. Um, but uh, he refused to put on that mask and made some very disparaging comments and was very disrespectful to her and the Florida Senate as a whole. Um, very pointedly asked him if he regretted those choices. He refused to say whether or not he regretted those decisions. Um, and quite frankly, we are the third largest state in the country. As the Florida Senate, we have the ability to confirm these positions. And we believed that this was a game to him. It was beneath the dignity of the Senate. And we had a lot of work to get done yesterday, a lot of bills on the agenda. And our constituents sent us here to do work. And so we weren't in, in we weren't excited about playing any more games with um, Dr. Ladapo. And so we decided to abstain, walk out so that we could move, they could move on with the dog and pony show that was going on. And we could continue to do the business of our constituents. Right. Well, uh, would you say that his refusal or his evasiveness was simply his style or was he really trying to uh, obstruct this procedure? You know, I think I, I, I don't believe, Michael, that that is his, a, a style. I think that when you ask very pointed questions, you should get point. You should get answers. Um, and when asked very directly and given multiple opportunities to answer a question, you answer the question that you're being asked, particularly in a confirmation hearing with multiple members of the legislature. Again, not just questions about COVID-19, um, but health disparities amongst the state, why the Department of Health is no longer putting up a COVID-19 dashboard. Senator Jones asked that question not an answer that was direct again. And so when asked again to give pointed answers, we never got those. We got a lot of pleasantries. We got a lot of niceties, um, a lot of verbal jujitsu, I like to say, but no direct answers. Right. Um, is the real root of the situation here the fact that uh, Dr. Lampado is ideologically absolutely in lockstep with Governor DeSantis? 
look, I believe that this is an individual who has a lot of um, answers that he has to give, uh, not just the Florida Senate, but Floridians as a whole. 21 million Floridians deserve the top doctor in our state who's going to be guided by real science. This is a man who said that mask wearing was an extreme measure. This is a man who stood with Florida's frontline doctors who condemned common sense COVID-19 safety measures. This is a man who falsely claimed he treated COVID-19 patients something that his former colleagues at UCLA dispute. And so we didn't even get a chance to ask some of those questions because of the games that he chose to play. It is dangerous. And this confirmation is going to continue to go through. It will go to ethics and elections and then to the floor. And we believe as a caucus, it's our job to point out the concerns that very that, that are very real. And yes, I do believe this is a political mouthpiece for the governor. If you look at Dr. Rivkes, who was here, who as we were walking into a pandemic, we voted to confirm. Some of our caucus voted for him, some of the, us voted against him. But as we were walking into a pandemic, we felt that we had a responsibility to stay with what we had, right? And we saw opportunities where Dr. Rivkes did stand up to the administration and make comments about mask wearing and the amount of time that we would have to be wearing a mask. And then you saw very quickly the administration ripped him off the dais at that point and didn't really let him speak after that. Yeah. This individual is side by side with our governor spewing false information. And that is extremely dangerous to Floridians. And we believe, again, that 21 million Floridians deserve better from the top, doc top doctor in our state. I know this is a sensitive topic, but uh, images of you were hacked from your phone several months ago. And a young man was arrested and is charged with a crime. Now you have introduced this bill on November the 12th, I had just dropped off my kids at school and was sitting at my coffee table doing some work. And I got a text message that said, is this Lauren Book? And I said, who is this? And they said, someone with a proposition for you. And then sent two photos to me. Um, one was of a sunburn. The other was um, uh, after a lumpectomy that I just had had undergone in November. Um, I immediately reached out to FDLE and they began um, an investigation. A sting was done and an individual was arrested and is currently out on bond. Um, I, am, I am the victim of digital hacking, cyber stalking and image based sexual abuse. Um, not just images um, that were stolen from me and my husband, but also deep fakes that were created that aren't me, um, but are created. And you can use three or more images to create those things. Um, we. It's a term now that I'm using is cyber trafficking. They're being bought, sold, and traded for online. And I have no control without my consent on the dark recesses of the internet. We know that this is happening uh, not just across our state, across the country, and across the world, um, predominantly to women and girls. And we're working very hard to, to, to pass this piece of legislation so that if you knowingly and willfully not just create these images and sell them online or trade them online for some pecuniary value, um, but if you create them, uh, that, that will be a crime. We have bipartisan support. I think another really important piece of the measure um, would, uh, would change the, the definition of child pornography, right? Because child pornography implies um, consent and we know that children cannot consent, but uh, it's something that I never thought in a million years that I would be a victim of a sex crime again at this point in time in my life. But here I am and here we are trying to make a difference.